Hi, this is Damon Pistolka, host of The Faces of Business, where I talk with interesting people sharing life and business experiences to entertain, engage, build community, and provide information to help others succeed. If you're interested in learning more about one of our guests or how we are helping business owners generate wealth and build businesses they can sell or succeed at Exit Your Way, you can find more information on our website, ExitYourWay.com or by contacting me directly, Damon, at ExitYourWay.com. I hope you enjoy the show. All right, everyone. Welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I am your host, Damon Postalka, and we are live today, and I'm excited because we're going to be talking about the best 2024 SEO practices from a CMO that knows, and we've got Max Monteo here from NextNet Media. Thanks for stopping by today, Max. Hey, Damon. Thank you for having me today. I'm really happy to join the Faces of Business. And here we are to talk about digital marketing, SEO, live. You name yeah. it. Good stuff, man. Well, Max, we always like to start out by getting an idea of how you got into doing what you're doing today to really put some meat behind what you're doing and, and how you're helping people today. So can you start there with us today? Yeah, I started in 2002 writing content where I was still at college. And some, like I wrote all content from a digital magazine, like I was just talking about soccer and sports. My, my dream at that time was to be like a journalist. Yeah. A soccer journalist, that was my dream. But then with the time, and I, I start seeing like a potential like I fall in love with marketing, with technology. Uh, then I went and live abroad. I was born and raised in Colombia, but I always wanted to live in different countries. So I lived a couple of years in the UK. And when I came back to, to my home country again, I was like, you know what? I like marketing. I want to join marketing. I want to do marketing. And I started working in, a, in an advertising agency that belonged to, to a group called uh, Low, which is like a, like a very famous digital uh, and traditional advertising agency and no they didn't have anybody to run the analytics department so oh. i was reading that book by the time about google analytics back in 2007 2008 and then i was like maybe i can be the person so i switched from content to data it's called a data at that point very early ages and then i started also doing the google adwords for different clients so, so i had to go and pitch to those clients, the need of being in digital marketing and the reason why they have to spend or allocate 2% or 5% of their budget into advertising, into digital marketing advertising. Back in, for those who are maybe uh, less than 30 years old, 10, 16 years ago, we did, everyone was spending money on TV, on newspapers. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like, why are we switching from TV that I have a national reach? Uh, for something called internet. Why do we need to do it on internet? So I was one of those few people who were pitching to clients the reason why digital marketing was an important thing back in the days. So fast forward 20 years from that, almost 20 years after that, that experience, I'm here in the States. I've been living in the US for the last 13 years. And now I'm the CMO here at Next Media, a company that pretty much is the powerhouse business of different, more than 200,000 business success stories combining digital marketing, SEO, lean building, uh, marketplaces. And we have pretty much clients all over the world, the US, Australia, the UK, Canada, Europe, and we have a 24 seven operation as well. So that's, that's how I'm very fortunate to be part of this group. And here we are just trying to grow this company. Yes. Yes. So I, I've got to go back. I've got to go back in your history, and I, I I go on I go on tangents once in a while. I talk. I'll just I'll just warn you. So, is it weird to think that you were selling AdWords when people were trying to get convinced to go from TV to AdWords, and now it's probably flipped a bit, and people don't think about advertising on TV nearly as much as they do digital advertising. That's yeah, that's that's correct. And it's it's really like now that you connect the dots that way, it's really funny. I yeah. remember talking to clients and explaining to them that we could measure the conversion rate or we could measure different objectives on their digital platforms by combining different advertising vehicles. 
and they couldn't believe it. They were like, no, this is, maybe this is just like oil. Uh, maybe there's a way for us to do it different. I have a big reach. So that one was a, a very important part of my professional career. But now, this year, I mean, in 2024, still tough to get clients to understand that digital marketing is not only Google and Facebook, that digital marketing has more, more like an omnichannel approach. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think we're still struggling a little bit with different clients to understand that it's not only the magic bullet, it's just more creating consistency, like a marathon. Uh, and sometimes they're just expecting to have just one magic bullet like this to start uh, increasing their, their, their number. So yeah, it's the same problem. Uh, and I think pretty much what we're trying, we've been trying to do for 20 years as an industry is just get the user attention. And before when we were, we were doing TV 20 years ago, we'll have advertising for like TV ads for like 30 seconds, a minute. Right now, sometimes Meta or those platforms, they tell us that the best video for, for you to create in a platform is five seconds. And you're like, why? If you spend two hours with a YouTuber every day. But sometimes the, the concept of quality, quantity, attention, it's still the same problem that we were facing 20 years ago. So yeah, here we are, but now we have more metrics. Maybe that's a little bit more confusing at some moment. But I think it's been really an interesting journey for not only as a professional in this marketing industry, but also for the brands I have the privilege to work with in the past. I think it's, it's amazing to see that switch and that flip from 80% towards TV and traditional advertising towards the opposite. 80% towards digital, 20% only in advertising. However, there are other industries that are still spending a lot on TV and that's not going to change. But uh, I think that's pretty, pretty amazing as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll get back into that because I've 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 been uh, personally been talking with some people that are that are, you know, divided between television and digital, and and I think there's some there's some real advantages to both, and it depends upon where you're at, but it's yeah. and I mean in size and relevance and all the there's a lot of things that play into it, but let's get back to what we're you know we're talking about SEO today because this is something that I think is is rapidly changing. You know, when you look at just go and do a Google search now, you have what is it, Gemini that comes up with the the results for you on Google and, and really kind of does a lot of pulling things together and answering questions, you know, because we've gone from a simple list of articles that might be relevant a few years ago, just a few years ago to uh, or maybe go back a little further. We had we, we didn't even have advertisers because really it was just relevant articles all up and down the page. And then we got a few advertisers and then we got a few more advertisers. But now you look at Google has changed so much the way that the search even works that that has to have translated into a lot of changes that website owners and developers and marketers really need to think about in their whole SEO strategy. Well, Gemini and we call it the search gener generative experience. It's something that's been rolled out right now worldwide. Here in the States, we had the, pro the possibility of playing with it for the last almost a year, I would say. I, was, I just came back from the UK that I was attending to different conferences, and they were just starting to see SGE deploying in the, on their search results. So at this point, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with that, that yeah. part or outside the States. But there are a couple of things for you to understand. Not everybody here in the States is getting the SGE results. Only, what, I will say, two out of 10 searches that are getting the generate bottom when you search for something. And I see, and I think only one out of 10 searches is getting the whole result expanded with AI. So still, Google is still trying to figure out what's the best way to do it. But I think from what I've, what I've, I've seen in the last couple of years, there are a couple of interesting insights. And the first one is something that we call zero click search, zero click search which is you search for different, for different keywords. For example, you search, what's the weather in Seattle? Easily, you just get the answer in front of you. Or you can say, uh, how old is uh, your favorite singer? What's the new Taylor Swift album? Most of those, key, those searches, you're getting the answer in front of you. So you don't have to click to go to a website. Now, the second part is Google is making you now search for more words using more keywords. It's really funny. Back in 20 years ago, 
we were telling our clients, well, you need to go for your branded terms or from some specific long tail keywords. Now, Google is trying to make you search more words into your experience. For example, let me give you a couple of uh, ideas. You can search for cheap flight tickets. Sometimes Google is going to add different tabs below your search experience, which is cheap flight tickets to India, uh, cheap flight tickets in summer. So they want you to create a more maybe profound uh, search experience because that's the way their AI thing is going to start connecting and providing better, best experiences as well. So we've seen a trend of users changing their habits. And the last one as well is Google is trying to make sure it connects you to the person or the brand that has what you're looking for. Uh, sometimes in the past, we were seeing that there were different content publications that were having like affiliate backlinks or affiliate links, sorry, to different uh, retailers. Right now, Google is, it seems to me like it's giving more relevance to the retailer itself. So if before you were searching for diapers and you will find in position number one, best diapers, top 10 of the best diapers, and then you will get different links to Walmart, Amazon, whatever. Now, Walmart is first or Target is first. So I think that's another evolution that we're starting to see slowly happening as well. There are different things happening at the same time. We don't have a crystal ball, but I think the zero click search is something that's gonna keep increasing. Uh, and now also as a marketer, we need to understand what are those keywords that are gonna drive the real intent for ranting or business. And, and that's why, that's what companies like us are working with different clients right now to, to figure it out. Wow, you just dropped a whole ton. I'm trying to write notes as fast as you're doing this. You dropped a ton of information there, though, because uh, let's uh, the zero click search. I mean that that is really. I mean that's Google's ultimate thing to get you to the information as fast as possible. And and it is. Uh, we, my wife and I just did it last night. We were wondering how old a singer was, and we just blow blow got yeah. it right then. You know, those are the kind of things that you see. And then you talked about the the affiliate you know putting the affiliates down farther and i that's got to be a, a huge impact if they're actually going to be doing this because every time you search for software every time you search for diapers like you said you're going to say time the 10 best diapers 10 best restaurants in my area 10 best whatever those those kind of blog posts have gone wild in the last five to ten years trying to rank everything up, even to, to the point to where me as a brand will post the top 10. So even showing competitors so that we can get better, better rankings. Exactly. Than that. Yeah. This is, that's going to be crazy if they start to do that, but it'll also help the people that are truly the providers of what that person is looking for. Now, let me go back to the zero, zero click search. Uh, according to different studies, 60% of users who are searching on Google do not click on any result. They just leave once they get the result on in, in their faces. So we're just, again, searching or getting to the user's wow. attention. And sometimes clients don't understand this, but it's just about how you create the title, what information you're providing in your description, what's the page that's appearing in front of the user. So I think from a tech perspective, from, from a SEO and content perspective, there is so much job to be done on that aspect that sometimes we could diminish a little bit, could forget about it, but that thing is still relevant. That's the first part. Now, going to the affiliate part, I was talking to different friends of mine who've been very active in the affiliate uh, space in the last four or five years, creating tons of different content pages, uh, understanding how pretty much we search. And they've said like pretty much their pages are going down dramatically month over month. Uh, it's a combination of different criteria, I would say, is the, combina the, the results of the past algorithm update from Google that happened in March. It's a combination of those changes as well. So I think right now we don't know, we don't have like a clear path about what's happening in that, in, in that industry. But we've seen like the retailers are getting predominant position right now. And it seems to yeah. be like, Maybe we will be saying, let's just avoid the middleman. Let's just, let's put you in front of the one who has the, the product for you and we'll see what happens. But again, those retailers need more content. So I think that's something that we could also leverage. Yeah, yeah. 
Wow. And then you talked about trying to give users more, like you, you made the, um, the example about cheap airline tickets and then mm-hmm. the, the things that are doing blah. Does that, does that really mean that, that people that are someone, if I was, if I had cheap airline tickets or I had a site that gave people cheap airline tickets that we need to be working on content that has longer, longer keyword phrases just to get niche down more. Yeah. Yeah. I think long term keywords have, have been always in place in the market. Sometimes we'll refer to them as a blue ocean in, because you need to understand pretty much what's that combination of keywords that you need to go after to start getting visit transactions, but the problem has always been the qua- the quantity of users searching for that keyword and the quantity of visits you get in yeah. your pages through those, those keywords. So that was the main problem. And I, was, I used to have clients who would say, Max, I don't want to give more attention to those long tail keywords because we get 50, 100, 300 visits. And for us, that's not relevant, even though they had great conversion rates. Now, with... The, with the with ChatGPT coming in the market a year ago, and this prompt engineering uh, action, like now you need to create your prompts to get better results. It seems like Google is also pivoting on that idea of getting more words added into the search box, rather than only one word. One word. They just want you to make sure you search for what you need, and they're gonna help you based on those little tabs to add more components into your search. The results for our web pages let's identify those signals everything is a signal let's identify those intent or intentions from the user let's turn them into a good piece of content that follows google's rules we can talk about this about about this google rules later but let's make sure we just start appearing there now the big question for your audience and for everyone in the industry is how are we going to measure them because maybe we're going to start getting the same 300 visits we used to get. But yeah. are, are they going to be more qualified than everyone coming from maybe a different keyword? That, that depends on the brand. I like to advise my clients the fact that we need to go after those long tail keywords. Because that's pretty much what the beauty of SEO is. If you're doing SEO to appear with your branded keywords, that's a given. You don't have to do anything. You need to have a website that's pretty much, that, that's it. A website that works, by the way. Other yeah. than that, I think the, the magic of, of this is making sure we understand the intent of the, consu- of the customer, the different combination of keywords, the content that we're going to give providing, and just provide the best experience uh, in our domain. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome because it is, man, things are changing so much. Yeah. So and I think they're changing, Damon, but I think... It's not only from a technical perspective that maybe this used to be before that was just a technical conversation. Now it's just like an omnichannel experience. It's just a conversation about the quality of your business and how you want to position your business. What are the things you want to go after? What are the different key differentiation points that we need to bring into a search experience? So I think now when we combine, we were talking at the beginning of the conversation, 20 years ago, we were telling our clients, please advertise on Google. Please buy some uh, display ads from whichever network. Now it's just, let's refine the tactics we're doing. Let's make sure we provide a valuable action to the customer because sometimes we're forgetting that they are humans and we're using a technological discussion. So I think that's, that's the benefit of, of, of marketing in this, in this year. And, and the last thing I would say on that one is, if your tra- if your if your website is not achieving fifty or sixty percent of traffic coming from organic efforts, that's a red flag that you need to be really looking into your tactics because you can depend on paid ads. You need to have a balance of multiple channels, but at the end of the day, organic into your website has to be or needs to be the most important source for your transactions, for your traffic, and for your quality of visitors. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's, that's great information. That's for sure. So, wow, so much, so much. So when you look at this and you think about AI 
and you think about this content and generating content, and we'll talk about the 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 these more recent Google updates. Do you think that the the proliferation of AI generated, I mean, just straight up AI generated content is creating opportunities for companies that, that want to create a higher quality content that has better user experience. Uh, and I'm not saying it's not based off of the AI research or whatever, but I mean, we're, we're seeing a lot of people that are basically letting it run, dropping it in, letting it run, dropping it in. And I wonder if there's oppor- you're seeing opportunities to do something a little differently. Yeah, uh, but let me just address this question by, by telling you and your audience that we are going into a content inflation period of our digital lives. What it means by content inflation is, let's say 10 years ago, I could write five blog posts a week or a month. And then my competitors were doing the same amount of blog thinking of the industry, the audience, the products, you name it. With, with AI, with everything that's happening with all the open AI chatbots, Jasper, all the companies, Copymatic, all those companies out there, now you can create 60 pieces of content per day or 100 or 200 or 1,000 content, content pieces. But then your competitor is going to be, oh, they one is creating 25 per day. I can create 50. And then the other competitor will be like, well, I'm going to create 60. Now, the problem with this is, first, it it's going to be lacking depth in terms of an SME perspective, a subject matter expertise, that's for sure. And the second part is you're going to start creating content, not for a human, just for a machine or a crawl to read it. So I think Google noted that one uh, in, the, in the last couple of, of, of algo updates they, they came up with. And pretty much what Google is saying is you're free to use AI. You can use it as long as you follow the EEAT uh, guide that we're giving you to write content. Uh, Google EEAT pretty much stands for experience, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. And if you have those four in your content, you're going to be ranking fine. With that being said, you can use AI. And I think there's a big opportunity for us to start leveraging AI in our content from a, maybe a creative perspective, maybe uh, helping us to create A-B testing from subject lines, titles. I still think the AI is a a little bit generalistic. Uh, You can have different actions or great uh, great outcomes from a broad perspective. But when you ask AI just to create something very particular about specific topics, I think it's just lacking or it ends up to create new content or new ideas that they don't exist. So I would say just a balance. But I, I do see the opportunity there. And actually, we in our company, we're using next media to just to bring, we're using AI to bring more actions to our client. We just released today one of our brands, the HUD, a link, it's called the AI Link Select, which is a tool that pretty much matches your website with all the inventory we have from a link building perspective. And you just need to buy it. Based on AI, it gives you re- relevance, it gives you uh, precision, and we just connect the publishers with the, with the brand, which is great. Wow. But again, I think I think that's something that's gonna be evolving. But for those who are listening out there today, just keep a balance. Uh, we, you can go gung ho on AI for sure, but be careful. You need just to remember you are writing for a human, someone who is looking for a problem to be solved in your brand, not someone who's gonna read two million articles per week because that's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point. Create the content for humans that they'll enjoy and use. Yeah. Good, good, good. So the other thing that that is, and I think you've answered this a lot, a lot of this, but how do you think that AI is really helping marketers to become better? I think there, it's helping us a lot. It's helping us to get better in our, in our time to, to make your go to market. Uh, what The way I, I'm, I'm using AI with my team, uh, it's like, let's say, AI, if we sit in a meeting room and then we have five people of my team, AI is the sixth team member. And what I'm trying to do with them is just get us action inputs from a creative perspective about topics that we might not be sure how to approach them. Sometimes from a creative perspective, you used to have this 
this syndrome of the of the empty page, which is you are in front of the computer with your Word document open, and you are like, how do I approach this topic? How do I approach this thing? Now, with AI, can give us different ideas to start just warming up and create better things. Yeah. From a technical perspective, when it comes to creating landing pages, when it comes to creating different pages in, uh, from a developer, I think it's going to give us uh, even more to improve and, in, and increase the go-to-market speed since we can do things faster. Uh, but again, it's not like today we're going to fire, we're going to get rid of everyone and then we only we are going to use only AI. I don't think that's the case. The case is just to use it with a balance, making sure you understand the value of the technology, but also you are the one who's fact-checking everything. There's a human that's making sure that we know how to use it. We can't forget that. If we let it go by itself, I don't know how it's going to look like, but I'm sure in the future we're going to see a bigger evolution on, on, on AI in the next 10, 20, 50 years. So, but that's, I think, too early to go, but I'm happy to use it. I like using it, but yeah. I'm not relying on 100%. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's great. And I, I think you're right there, too, that so many people are talking about how AI is just making us better. And, and like your, your example of that open page, I can't tell you how many times I have, I know there was a talk about that open page, not having those ideas and being able to, to get some prompts to get things started is a huge, it's a huge time saver. That's for sure. Yeah. Now, the other thing you, you've worked in data, you understand data very well. Um, how do you think, you know, we see a lot of tools and even Google's playing with some tools in the Google AdWords space with, with AI and helping us to understand what's happening with the data better, better. What do you, I mean, what are you seeing in that? How is it help with you guys be better in, in understanding what the data is telling you? I think like all different companies that are leveraging data are also using AI to provide a better experience for the brands. For example, we work with Salesforce. Salesforce launched a couple of months ago, almost like six, seven months ago, an AI product called Einstein. And it was pretty, it's pretty much based on providing you recommendations based on the number they've seen, providing you guidance, all those forecasting, and helping you to come up with better, not analysis, but at least showing you the different correlations. Now, when you go to GA4, I have to say, Google Analytics 4, for me, it's been a little bit of uh, chaos. Uh, it's not as, as simple as it used to be yeah. as I used to be before. But one of the things that I've noticed a couple of weeks ago is now they say, for example, uh, I saw it earlier today, uh, from the insights coming from AI, they say, oh, we, we are forecasting on a spike of your traffic that's going to be happening between the next three, four days because your behavior from your ad spend has changed. And so we predict it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna increase X 20%. So those things are, are nice to have. It also provides insights, but I think when it comes to the analysis of the data to make decisions, you can make better tables, graphs, forecasting with AI, but you need to have somebody behind to say, okay, this is where we're gonna go. This is the, the reason why. This is how we connect the dots. But uh, I'm very happy to see all brands making a huge effort towards bringing an AI product of what they do. I've, I've seen it with Tableau, with Salesforce, with Google, with YouTube, you name it. Everyone is adding an AI component to make our lives easier. And maybe just to rely more on AI on a, let's say, uh, operative perspective. Whereas we can have the creative one just to, to spend more time on creative because at the end of the day, creativity is what drives this business in a better way. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say hey to a few people. We got Curtis Thompson here. Tompkins, great friend of mine, long term. You see, he, he's the person I know that's using AI in his business. Thanks for being here today, Curtis. And then George stops by and says, your new release sounds like a great AI tool. That's That's for sure. That's... That is going to be very interesting because I'm going to check that out later as well. So as you're moving forward, what are some of the things that are really exciting you about what you're seeing developing with, with the whole ecosphere around generating more organic traffic? What are some of the things you're going, wow, there's going to be a real opportunity in this or, or just things that are getting you excited for it? 
So there are a couple of things that are getting me very excited. The, the first one is, this is something that's been happening for a long time, but I think in 2024, it's getting more, ex, more exposure. And it's something we call uh, keyword vectorization. This is pretty much, from a keyword perspective, you can have multiple ways of using that keyword. And you can turn that into a content calendar, into a content strategy. This is called uh, keyword vectorization, or, and that's the best way for everyone out there to start understanding how to produce better content. So that's something that's been driving me very, like with the high hopes of increasing quality from an authority perspective. I think that was, if you wanna get out, if you, if you want to be the authority in your niche, in your industry, in your category, you need to start understanding all those keywords that are coming to your website and how do you get the most of the keywords. That's the first part. The second part that's also uh, driving me with the high hopes right now is lo what we call local SEO. It's been for a long time as well, but if you have a franchise, if you have a company that has more than two, three, four locations, right now you can do map, map pack on Google, on Apple Maps as well, Yelp. So there are like different brands that are also getting into that part of the spectrum from a local perspective. Apple is the most recent one. You know, here in the States, most of us, it's a combination between Google Maps or Apple Maps. So I think that's something that could be a game changer for those businesses, especially since you can connect with your clients, providing reviews, pictures, uh, images, you name it. And the last one, which is the more futuristic one, is everything about the intent of the keywords. Uh, as you may know, when, when you have the purchase funnel, uh, you can search for zero click searches like the birthday of your favorite singer or the release date of, uh, of Taylor Swift album, of the population of Kim, Cambodia. But when it comes to your brand, your business, I think right now there are more tools that are helping you to identify the intent of the keyword, just to make sure what's the keyword that's gonna pull the trigger on users to make a purchase or to convert the KPI you want. I think that's something that's gonna be evolving as we speak. And the last one, just to close on that one, how to rank your websites on OpenAI, on ChatGPT. I think that combination there of, let's say tomorrow you go on ChatGPT and you have a prompt about recipes, how to create a recipe for five kids who are vegetarian and they only eat, I don't know, this kind of food in this part of the world. You're gonna start messing with brands. So we need to understand how we get the brands to be in front of the customer when they go on different searches so i think that's going to be like a little bit of, of challenges but really looking forward to understanding how to do it yeah wow the the intent the the keyword intent i mean that that's that's powerful when we start to get into that to be able to really understand what that is and then try to yeah wow yeah right right, right now i think that's that's a big part since it's like a like a connection of multiple neurons all together. So mm -hmm. that's a keyword. And when you have a big brain, you start analyzing and understanding different lines of keywords that are pretty much part of the same family. And I think that's a big game changer because we're gonna be able to test and learn easier uh, if you follow the algorithm update, you don't repurpose your domains, if you create content that's good for the human, good for Google, good for, the AI good for everybody. So I think if you place that, if you play that way, you, you'll be fine. Yeah. Huh. So the old tried and true SEO tactics of creating content, that's not dead. No. Uh, uh, we, we have a, an internal joke in the, in the team because we say like, uh, Every day someone says that SEO is dead, Facebook is dead, Instagram is dead, Bitcoin is dead. Like that's like a combination of everything that's happening every other, uh, every other month. But when I look at my clients' websites, their analytics, I look at the industry. Uh, I came from Brighton SEO last week. And again, like there was huge SEO advocates learning more, how, learning how to get their job better. And you could see like they were like, six, seven different companies uh, offering link building or offering content or offering AI technologies to map 
those keywords to create your topical authority strategy, that's when you start understanding and you say, okay, this, this business is evolving, but it's far, far from being dead. I think it's just evolving to a point that we're going to be having different challenges, but as long as we think about the customer, the user, and we provide value, we, we, we're going to be fine. But sometimes we forget about that and we just start creating things in, a, in an automated pilot that don't drive any, any, any value to the user. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's good. That's good. It's good to know. Good to know because there's a lot of people that invest an awful lot in in truly yeah. developing their authority, right? And exactly. and trying to give get good good content that really helps her. And uh, to know that that's still relevant is really nice. So the you mentioned on it a little bit about Google, the algorithm. You know, that seems like they're changing it more often now. It seems like the changes are a lot more drastic. You know, some people. They're flying high, hit the Google algorithm change, and they're not anymore. What What are you guys seeing with the, the latest updates? So there was a big update uh, in the first weeks of March, pretty much the first week of March. Uh, and we, we saw different use cases of, of websites that were really, really hit by, by, the, by the changes. The first one is what we call repurposing domains. And let me just explain, let me explain to you what it means. Let's say you have your domain, uh, the faces of business.com. And a year ago, you were selling their, you were creating content for you about your personal brand. And suddenly, six months ago, you, you changed completely everything from that perspective. And then you start, you started selling books and you okay. start selling uh, Amazon items, whatever. So Google is penalizing and I was going hard on those who have changed the reason why they had that domain. That's repurpose domains the second part is those who are abusing on ai content uh publishing 60 70 articles per day uh in a high quantity without any relevance or value that's that's important i would say the third part is those who still have technical difficulties from an seo perspective from a technical seo i think that's something that you need to pay attention to because that's the core of your of your system the core of the day to day but other than that, there are more hypotheses that we haven't been able to prove completely. There's going to be another, like a second part of the algo update or another correction that's going to happen on May 5th, a couple of days from now. We'll see what's the impact because what happens is sometimes the industry just stops moving as fast as they used to move while they get used to the algorithm update, while they understand what's their traffic. And of course, we've seen like a uh, decrease on different criteria for a website perspective. Some of my clients or people I know, they've lost 20, 30% of their traffic. Wow. It's a, it's a correction of the market, yes. What do you need to do? Just pay attention to the value, how you create content, pay attention to your technical parts of the website. Let's make sure you have the basics right. And sometimes you don't even have the basics right. So that's pretty much where I will say my recommendation goes to all of the all of, all of those listening today. Yeah. So the repurposing domains where you were doing something with your domain before and now you're doing something different, that's going to get penalized a bit. Abusing the AI content, which we talked about that earlier, don't just be spitting it out there for the for make sure you're creating good content for humans. Yeah. And then technical SEO problems, it sounds like it's more important than ever to make sure that you got your SEO, the technical part of your SEO working right. Exactly. And then just just, just review the basics. Uh, we were doing a webinar yesterday with one of our brands about technical SEO. And then we were saying, we've seen clients who don't pay attention to their sitemap or the robots TXT, and they don't even submit anything or they just leave it by the sake of the spirit to go and change it. Pay attention to those items. Pay attention to your technical part. It's it's never too late for you to go and check and fine tune everything from a technical perspective and keep doing what you're doing as long as it provides value. If you're doing backlinks, fantastic backlinks, still a good signal. Just do it with a high authority partners like us, for example. Do not do it with PBNs on content partners because that's not going to happen to work. That's going to affect you. So I yeah. think everything you're doing, just go for the excellence and go for the highest quality of everything you're doing. If you play that way, you will be fine, in my opinion. 
do high quality work and you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. That's good stuff. Well, as, as we're winding down here, Max, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to that are the big challenges that you're seeing coming up that, that you're looking forward to tackling in the next year? Oof, that's a, that's a very good question, uh, Damon. I would say I want to keep digging on personalization uh, from the different signals that we can get in our website. Uh, I'm really tired of seeing different brands offering one layer of personalization, which is your your subject line. Hello, Max. Hey, Damon. And I, everyone believes that everything about personalization. I just want to make sure we can create one-to-one -one meaningful conversations with every single prospect, client, past client, everyone who's been with us. That's, that's the first thing. The second one is the content evolution. I still think content has a big room to grow. Uh, the third thing I'm really in, like, I'm going to get into the retail media because it's been a huge development in the industry for the last four or five years, but now it's getting mainstream. So uh, uh, retail media is something that's important, at least from a marketing profession, like from, from, the, from the profession. And the last thing we'll say data, collecting first party data uh, and collect, collect, collecting something I call the golden record, which is how do we make sure we get more information or we gather more information from each user every time they interact with us on the, on the app, on the website, on our properties, if we are a hotel or a CPG brand in at the supermarket. So just to make sure we provide a better experience. I believe marketing is providing better experiences or customized experiences to each client based on what I know about that person. And, and I think that's something we can keep doing and, and growing for sure. Yeah, again, I'm writing tons of notes because I, I really enjoy what you're saying here, that that first party data to provide a better experience or to be able to provide a more meaningful one on one conversation when they hit your website is huge. I mean, because if if that's a repeat person coming to your website and instead of saying hello, Max or hello, Damon, they say hello, Damon. Are you here to get more accessories for these blah, blah, blah that you just bought? Because this is the coolest addition to that ever. I mean, that's that's the kind of stuff that will, I, I think, could really make a huge difference. Yeah. And also, there are things I want to unlearn. I want to start abusing of different uh, tactics to send multiple messages to the user at the same time. I think we just need to be leveraging the best channels. We need to unlearn different things that we had used in the past from a content perspective. I think this digital world is just, you need to learn, but at the same time, unlearn. And that's the beauty of, of our profession, because I think it's evolving very fast, but we need to be able to provide value. As long as you provide value, uh, I think you're gonna be able to have a better experience for your customers. Yeah, that is, that is a good point, unlearning, because there are some of that, you know, you get used to, we do, we send an email, then a text, then a phone call or whatever these, these ways that people are communicating, or we always use text or we always just some of these things that we've gotten used to, that's just the normal way of doing it. We have to rethink that. And, and really, as you said, get more meaningful on a one-on-one -on -one, one -on basis and know that you may like communication this way and I might like it that way or have the, those different desires as we know more about those people. Ah, so good. So good. Wow. Max, it's been awesome having you here today on the Faces of Business. If people want to talk to you guys at NextNet Media what or, or look at some of the products or some of the things you guys are doing, what's the best way for them to find, find you guys, find what's going on there? Uh, they can go to nextnetmedia.com. You're gonna find all the, the the information about our company. You're gonna see the different brands we work with. Uh, we work with brands such as The Hot, H O T H, Authority Builders, and others. So feel free to visit us on nextnetmedia.com. If you wanna to talk to us, you can go on our LinkedIn profile, Nextnet Media as well, or you can find my LinkedIn profile with my full name, Max Gomez Montejo, Gomez with a Z as in zebra. And I'll be more than happy to connect with you, talk about business, talk about digital marketing, and, and why not maybe go for a coffee one day. So, yeah, feel free to contact us. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here today, Max. I really enjoyed the conversation. I want to thank George for being here, dropping a comment, Curtis and Maria. Thanks so much for being here. All of you that were listening, but did not drop a comment and came in late. I, I noticed that we had more people coming in and go back to the beginning because Max dropped golden nugget after golden nugget here about SEO, the different things that he is seeing in marketing today that can really help you. We covered a lot of topics with AI, AI generated content and, and things like that. So go back to the beginning, start over again and, and listen from there. Thanks so much for being here every day, everybody. And Max, thanks once again, hang out for a moment. We'll finish up when we're offline.